often overeat or we eat emotionally, we must, we must find a way to process our feelings and to make peace with them. And this is a non-negotiable negotiable part of yogic conscious eating, meaning when we eat and we are conscious about our choices and we have the power to say no, to say yes when we want to. So processing your feelings is a non-negotiable negotiable part if you want to step out of emotional eating, right? Now, this, um, this technique helps us to process our feelings and the thing is we eat because we feel emotional and we don't know what to do with that, <laughs> with that baggage of emotions, right? So of, of feelings, but there is no secret formula. There is this technique that helps us to do this process of processing your feelings way easier. It makes way easier to process our feelings through this, through this technique. But there is no secret formula because we have to go, to go through this stage, which getting to, uh, to know us better and processing these feelings. So we are constantly working on ourselves. I am constantly practicing this technique in my life and I will be doing it for the rest of my life because the moment I, I stop looking at my feelings and I stop that observing how I'm feeling, how I'm going, um, I'm dealing, dealing with situations. I don't know what's going on with my work today. <laughs> From that moment, I know I will start overeating and emotional eating again. All oh, that big hole that I was, I found myself for a long, long time in my life. So the inner work is constant, it never stops. That's why I say it's not a magical formula, okay? And there are many feelings behind emotional eating. Now we have, for example, anxiety, overwhelm. Some people eat because they're feeling sad or confused. And some people eating because of any feeling that is uncomfortable, all of them. You know, all of them. And I was, uh, for me, for example, was mostly when I was anxiety, uh, when I was feeling anxiety and overwhelmed, not so much when I was sad, but it really depends. This is a personal. The thing is, for any of us, feelings are not our enemies. That's the, the shift that we want to do. When we understand that feelings are not our enemies, and we need them, we need feelings to react, to move forward in life. And they are a sign that of what is and what is not in balance. So meaning feelings are our teachers. They are our internal triggers in emotional eating because we don't know what to do with them sometimes, you know? But from the time we shift this perspective, they are our teachers. Then we open up space to breathe and to get to know ourselves better. Um, so that's what direct experience helps us to do, to shift this perspective on our feelings and see them as a teacher because we use, we learn from them. And, you know, when, I, when are we feeling anxious or when are we feeling overwhelmed and all, all the all that we want to do is to go and eat, overeat. Sometimes we might think there's something wrong with me. Why am I feeling like that? I know, let me know if you used to feel like that in the comments, because that was a constant thought for me. There is something wrong with me because I lived with anxiety for such a long time and I still feel anxiety because anxiety is part of life, not as intense as before because I learned how to process anxiety. Um, but I kept thinking there is something wrong with me. So feelings like anxiety, they served our ancestry, let's say. And they had a purpose in our past. Let's say, you know, when um, back many, many, like hundreds and thousands of years ago, our ancestors perhaps felt anxiety because they need to run, they need to fight, they need to survive in the wild, right? 
and we do carry still a little bit of these feelings, a little bit of residues of this the, from our past, from our ancestors. But the difference is today we feel anxious because let's say we had a discussion with our boss. We feel anxious because uh, someone, you know, did something wrong at the traffic jam. So we, we feel we are triggered easy, easier by things that not necessarily will harm us or will kill us, but we still carry this emotional baggage. And also there is a lot of uh, residues that we carry from our, the womb of our mothers, for example, and from our childhood. But the thing is we are carrying we are carrying a lot of baggage that does not belong to us we need to process them so we want to process this emotional baggage so when we understand that feelings served us in the past but they are not serving us as much when we are feeling so triggered and so anxious by something simple that happened in our day maybe simple compared to you know um the what they had to go through in our past but for us it's like a big deal it's a big deal someone got in front of us in the line of the supermarket that's a huge deal sometimes we may may feel stressed or anxious or angry so we are easily triggers but feelings are normal and feelings are harmless harmless and the only way the only reason they are there triggering us and becoming stronger stronger is because we're not processing them so the fact that our actions and our our actions in a way that we deal with the feelings and our resistance it's always there it's making them worse resistance making makes our feelings worse like 100 percent so when we get it i'm resisting to it i'm trying to run away or i'm dealing with it in another way that it's not processing i'm making it worse anything that you do towards your feeling that it's not processing it makes it worse. That's I just want to make it clear that feelings don't need to be eliminated. Feelings are our teachers and we need to see them as such.